the return of the house of Dawi. <laughs> the return of the house of Dawi. Our scripture texts are Amos chapter 9, verse 11 through 12, and Acts chapter 15, verses 15 through 18. The scripture texts are, quote, in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of Dawi, which is fallen, and will rebuild the ruins of it, and will set up the parts thereof that have been broken down, and will build it up as in the ancient days, that the remnant of men and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called may earnestly seek me, saith Yah, who does all these things. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of Dawid, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after Yah and all of the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, save Yah, who do of all these things known unto Elohim are all his works from the beginning of the world. The book of Amos in chapter 9 speaks of the time when the house or the family of David will be restored to power and influence in the world. And as we see the crisis around the world, uh, these are nothing but uh, signs leading up to the time when Yah will restore the house of Dawid, the family of King David, and his kingdom will be restored to power and influence in the world. In verse 11 of chapter 9 of uh, Amos, it says, In that day I will raise up the tabernacle of Dawid that is fallen and will rebuild the ruins of it and will set up the parts thereof that have been broken down and will build it up as in the ancient days. Notice the phrase. In that day in verse 11 means a specific time period when Yah restores the house of David. Uh, in the preceding verses, from verse 7 to verse 10 in chapter 9 of Amos, it, it states the tragic condition that the house of David and, and all Israel will be in at the time when Yah restores the house of David, as cited in verse 7 through 10 of Amos 9. Are you not as children of the Cushites, the Ethiopians, unto me? O children of Israel, say of Yahweh, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, the land of Mizraim, and the Philistines from Kaptur, and the Syrians from Kir? Behold, the eyes of Yahweh Elohim are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Yaakov, save Yah. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Uh, notice in verse seven, the phrase, 
Are you not as children of the Ethiopians? Are you not as children of the Cushites unto me, O children of Israel? Uh, now, this would mean that in the time when Yah restores the house of David, that they and all of the Israelites would be predominantly a black people. Let me repeat that again. Uh, when it says, are you not as the children of the Ethiopians, the Cushites, which means black people. This, this means that in the time when Yah restores the house of David, that they and all of the Israel, Israelites will be predominant a black people. Because Yah says to them in verse 7, are you not as Cushites, which has been translated as Ethiopians, which means black face. I remember in my first journey to Israel back in 1990 when I was living in Kenya and I went to, to Israel from Kenya where I was living. And I, I for my first time I got there I've been living in Africa. It's a sea of black. Now I go to another country, and I've been in Africa so long, I'm not used to being around other people as much. So I got there, and all of these other people, of uh, the Israelis who were white, uh, I could hear them behind my back calling me a cushion, which means, you know, it's the Hebrew of, a, uh, of the equivalent of an N-word, insult. And I, I was really amazed how they were. And then I went on the Palestinian side. They called me a cushy also. So, you know, when I hear people talking about Palestinians and, and Jewish people over there, uh, well, basically, they look at Black people as not being worth their time, most of them. Though some of them are more reasonable than others. But there's a general consensus that being black is not popular in that part of the world. Yet Yah says, when he restores the house of David, and, and, and he's saying that they uh, and all of the Israelites will be predominantly a black people. So that means some things have got to change over there. Because when you're being called a cushy, or like they may say in Yiddish, call you a Swatsa. You, you heard of Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? You know what that means. Black what? N-word. Schwarz, Schwarzenegger. Schwarza is Yiddish for black. So I, I um, look at the social condition over there in the so-called Middle East now. And... To me, it, this is important in verse 7, that Yah calls out the Israelites as people in that time when he restores the house of David that they will be predominantly a black people because Yah says to them in verse 7, are you not as Cushites, which has been translated as Ethiopians, which means black. Also, he says, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt. Also, Yah describes in verse 7 that the house of David would be restored in a time when Israelites live in a land in which they had been slaves. Just like when uh, they left Egypt, they came out of a land of slavery. Also, in verse 7, Yah gives examples of other people coming out of their lands of slavery, such as the Philistines coming out of capital and Syrians from the land of Kir. To illustrate to the Israelites living in the time of the restoration of Dawi, that they will likewise come out of a land of slavery when Yah restores the house of David, as stated in verse 7. Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaptur 
and the Syrians from Kir. Clearly, this land of our American slavery has many similarities to ancient Egypt, both by its oppression and by its monuments, such as the Egyptian obelisk in Washington, D.C. that's called the Washington Monument, and the Great Pyramid Seal on the dollar bill. Therefore, it is safe to conclude that when Yah restores the house of Dawid or the house of David, it will be in the time when he brings Israelites out of our land of slavery here in America. Also preceding the restoration of the house of Dawid, Yah says in verse eight, that the kingdom of Dawid's descendants would be destroyed, as stated in verse 8. Behold, the eyes of Yah Elohim are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Yaakov, saith Yah. So in 586 BC, that's 2,500 years ago, Yah allowed the Babylonians to destroy the kingdom of David. Because of our sins and transgressions of the laws and the commandments of Moses. But in verse eight, he also promised that he would not totally, he would not totally destroy the house of Yaakov, even. Uh, but since 586 BC, there has been no kingdom government of the house of Dawid in Israel. Also in verses 9 and 10, Yah says that preceding the restoration of the kingdom of the house of Dawid, that he would scatter Israelites among all nations and put us to the sword, as stated. Below, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a seed. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Also, our master Yahshua likewise spoke regarding this judgment. Described in Amos 9, verses 9 through 10. When he said in Luke chapter 21, verse 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. In addition to our master, Yahshua, harmonizing his message in Luke 21, 24, with Amos in chapter 9, verses 9 through 10, he likewise brings out a very significant point as to when the timing of the restoration of the house of Dawid will be. When he said in verse 24, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Notice that our master said that while we would be put to the sword and scattered in captivity to all nations, just as it says in Amos chapter 9, verses 9 through 10, that during that time, our homeland of Jerusalem will be trodden down by Gentile nations until the times of those Gentiles are fulfilled. So based upon our master Yeshua's words in Luke 21, 24, in conjunction with Amos chapter nine, verses nine through 10, it is safe to conclude that the restoration of the kingdom of the house of Dawid will take place when the times of European Gentile world power and dominion is fulfilled and ended. Currently, 
the white supremacist Euro Gentile government of the Zionist state of Israel is on its last legs. And I, I call it a white supremacist country because it practices apartheid and it, it does other evil things to people of color. And they're just racist. Let's just call it out for what it is. They're just racist. And Zionism, as it's called, is nothing but an extension of white supremacy. That's all it is. Zionism is nothing but a, a, another form of white supremacy. It's, and so with that said, these people genetically that call themselves Jews, for the most part, have no ancient ancestor to the land of Israel. Most of them don't. Uh, even this Israelis, uh, fellow European Gentile allies is America and Europe. As they're watching Israel having to deal with six different war fronts right now, Israel can't manage a war from, that it has to face from six fronts. Not nowadays. Not with drones and the kind of missiles they have nowadays. Israel's it, it can't do like it did when it did a blitzkrieg against the Arabs in 1973 and 1967. They can't do that anymore. All those war strategies and taxes are obsolete now, for the most part, in terms of a major war. Now it's just a push button missile and drone attack warfare that any of these nations can do. So even America, even the Israelis fellow European Gentile allies are having problems trying to defend Israel from Iran, Syria, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis in Yemen, and the Shia militia, uh, the Shia uh, militias in Iraq. These Gentile world powers in the West, here in the West, are gradually losing their grip of power over the world. You can see it. And this is fulfilling Yahshua's prophecy in Luke chapter 21, verse 24, that the times of the Gentiles is being fulfilled. So from now, for now, as we're seeing in real time, the decline of the Western Euro Gentile powers, it means that the restoration of the kingdom of Dawid draws closer. Also, regarding that time when the restoration of the house of Dawid takes place, it is stated in Acts chapter 15, verses 15 through 18. It states, and to disagree the words of the prophets, as it is written, after this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of Dawid, which has fallen down. And I will build up the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men may seek after Yah and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, save Yah, who doeth all these things, known unto Elohim are all his works from the beginning of the world. These are the words of Elder Yaakov, who was the shepherd of the congregation of Zion in Jerusalem. He was the son of Yahshua's stepfather, Joseph, and was thereby a descendant of King David. Yaakov's name in English has been translated as James, and the book of James in the Bible was written by Yaakov. Jacob's recitation of Amos chapter 9, verse 11 through 12, in Acts chapter 15, verse 15 through 18, differs slightly in verse 17 from the text in uh, Amos chapter 9, verse 12. In the Masoretic Hebrew text that the King James Version is translated from, of Amos chapter 9, verse 11 through 12, it states, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of Dawid that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, Sebiah, that doeth this. Notice in verse 
in verses 11 and 12 that it reports that the tabernacle of Dawid, the house of David, will be restored in order, as it says in verse 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith Yah, that doeth this. But the Septuagint text version of Amos chapter 9, verse 12, which is cited in Acts chapter 15, verse 17 states, quote, that the residue of men might seek after Yah and all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, say of Yah, who do of all these things. If you'll notice the differences between these two versions of Amos chapter nine, verse 12, the King James version says in verse 12 of Amos nine, that the restoration of the kingdom government of the house of David will be set up in order uh, as it says, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, said, Yah, that do of this. So this version insinuates that the house of Dawi will be set up in order that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Gentiles, which are called by the name of Yah. But in Elder Jacob's quotation in Acts 15, verse 17 of Amos chapter 9, verse 12, it states something a little different. It states that the residue of men might seek after Yah and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, said Yah, who do of all these things. So in combining Amos chapter 9, verse 12, with Acts chapter 15, verse 17, it appears based on these two texts that Yah restores the house of Dawid for these reasons. First, in Amos chapter 9, verse 12, the reasons given for why Yah restores the tabernacle of Dawid is, number one, that they would possess the Edomites. Now, the Edomites is, is a big, <laughs> that's a big, topic and subject in Israelite circles that they that everybody talks about. And when people say, well, who are the Edomites today? Well, we already know in, in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 6, that the Edomites in the day when these things take place, they will be in possession of the land of Israel. So not saying that all the Israelis are Edomites, but there's definitely a contingency of Edomite converts to Judaism that have existed since the time of King Herod, who was an Edomite convert. And as you know, he was antagonistic to the son of the Most High, Yahshua, who tried to kill him. So these same people, the Edomites, they're, they're still in existence, blended in, some of them, within the religion of Judaism because they were forced into conversion around 100 BC by the uh, Israeli king priest or the Israelite king priest named Johnson Hycranus. This is about 100 years before Yahshua. And it's from those converted Edomites that Her the Herod family emerged and took over by being puppet rulers for the Romans over the Israelites. So these people are always going to be in a position where they're against the program and plan of Yah's kingdom for the restoration of the house of David. As we remember, when the wise men came to Jerusalem and they asked King Herod, where is he who was born to be king of the Jews? Notice, born to be king of the Jews. See, Herod wasn't born to be king of the Jews. His family converted to being Jews by uh, being proselytes. So Herod was never born to be king of the Jews. That frightened him. And he did all he could to find out where that child was to kill him. Well, those same people today are in the Israeli government, the descendants of the Herods and the other Edomites. 
And this isn't saying that all of the Israelis are bad people. There's some good people and bad people among them, just like any other group of people. But the people that run that government, you can see by their wickedness in the way that they have such callous disregard for life that this, this is Edomite tendencies that they exhibited. And that's why Yah said, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And so Amos chapter nine, verse 12, gives the reasons why Yah restores the tabernacle of David. One is that they must control the Edomites. The Edomites have gotten out of hand over there. They're, they're just, Random, they've killed almost 25,000 people already indiscriminately. And most of those people are not the soldiers of Hamas. They've killed a much smaller amount of the actual people who they claim they're going to fight. They're killing mostly women and children and innocent people. They don't care. That's some Edomite tendency. Yeah, I said the House of David's got to come in to stop that mess one day as stated, that they may possess the remnant, that they may possess, that is the house of David, that they may possess what remains of Edom and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, say Yah, to do with this. Secondly, in Acts chapter 15, verse 17, the Septuagint quotation of Amos 9, 12 states the reason for the restoration of the tabernacle of Dawid is, quote, that all Gentiles seek after the name of Yah. It's stated by Jacob in Acts chapter 15, verse 17, where he states, quote, in verse 14, he states, Simeon hath declared how Elohim at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. So. The, the, the other reason why the house of David is set up is Yah wants to make the, the tabernacle of David to be something that attracts all people, people from all races and nationalities who want to turn to him, that he will use the house of David as a catalyst to bring a great worldwide revival unto Yah throughout the world. So now this is the other reason is Yah wants to save not just Israelites, he wants to save other races and nations of people as well. Because Yah so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. So now Yah wants to save people from the perishing process that the world is putting itself in, but particularly the perishing of the soul which the world is putting itself in. So in combining these two texts in Amos chapter nine and Acts 15 regarding the reasons why Yah restores the tabernacle of David, we get a very interesting view. Clearly the Edomites in the Masoretic version of Amos nine verse 12 are seen to be obstacles aligned with the Western powers who enslaved us and oppressed us. And certainly that was the case. And then for the house of David to emerge to be a light of truth to the world, Yah must remove Esau, the Edomite, from power in the government of the state of Israel. And that is what is unfolding before our eyes with the war in Gaza. The Edomites who govern Israel are going to fall. And the house of Dawid is reemerging to replace the government of Esau. As Yahshua said in Matthew 24, 14, and this good news of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. 